So let's just get straight into this match, guys. And it's going to be Shaman versus Druid to start things off. And things are looking aggressive from protagonist side. Uh, but this is looking like the Beast Druid uh, coming from Urken. Now, Beast Druid was a deck that was submitted and used by both Chaki and Admirable in the Americas preliminaries. And those two guys uh, didn't get into the top 16. Uh, I've played this deck a few times myself. I, I, I was very curious on how it performed. And I, I felt it was just a little lackluster, in my opinion. But... We'll see how these guys handle the deck, and let's see if Urken can make some use out of it. So, Tunnel Trog to start things off. Create Alchemist in Protagonist's hand. Deal with those pesky Doomsayers. Another night on the prowl. But just a Druid of the Saber gonna start things off in the stealth mode to clear up that Trog. It's getting hot in here. Flame Juggler. And the one damage is tanked by the Druid of the Saber, which is good for Urken because that means... Well, actually, no, it's a little Another awkward. Because now he doesn't clear Trog. I actually wouldn't have minded uh, seeing the Druid of the Saber go into the Flame Juggler at that point. The the ping from the, the Flame Juggler made things a lot awkward. I thought it would have been okay, but now he loses his second Druid of the Saber... Uh, just on board at least to this flame juggler, but the mark of mark of Yasaraj will definitely change things. Worry, It'll uh, give him a little bit more power, and he'll be able to stay on board at least with this druid, the saber. Wow, gonna go for wild growth instead. That's that's curious. I mean, I think you only go for Wild Growth if you really want Nourish, but once you've seen the Argent Horse Rider coming from your opponent, you should be thinking, ah, well, actually, I need to clear out this board or I'm just going to get smoked. Lava Shot picked up. It can clear out that Druid of the Saber, uh, but doesn't unlock any crystals at this point. You could just clear it out with the Horse Rider, but I like just using Lava Shot here. Keep the Divine Shield on the Horse Rider, rider make him really awkward. To be cleared for the druid. Pay attention, class. So this will probably eat a lava burst. I expect, and then you can reset your overload crystals with the sentinel and get that free two body down. So things are lining up really nicely for Pro protagonist at the moment. Uh, he's got kind of a, a flow of threats coming out. He's answering all the stuff coming from Urken. And Urkan's just got like tremendous amounts of ramp in his hand, but it's just not doing much. The land serves me. Goes for the 2-2. Two -two. Can't afford to ramp up at this point. Rock Bite picked up, so only a Doom Hammer needed to really start punching that damage through. Goes for the Rock Biter on himself to clear up the Maya Keeper. Is that what I'm gonna see? Or are we gonna see just a really aggressive push come from the Shaman? Yeah, I, I was thinking then he might go for the slime clear with the Argent Horse Rider, but I wouldn't have liked it. Just keep those Divine Shields up. Uh, swipe going to come down. Wrath is going to dispatch of the 2-1, and then 2-2 two -two will finish off the spell power to him. So, afraid of Lava Burst. He's already seen one, one so it's not an unreasonable fear. So this could be the point of the match where Urken stabilizes. Because Protagonist is not exactly drawing the steam he needs to keep this aggro train going. Uh, Earthshock will make things a little easier when he wants to punch damage through, but he just doesn't have the damage on board right now. And the board is going to be cleared by Urken. And yeah, things are looking a little shaky for Protagonist. So not a bad pickup there, can uh, cycle two cards, see if you can find something to keep him going. Ah, uh, they are not the right answers. Might just have to go up for Totem and pass at this point. 
So this gives Urken an opportunity to just hero power every turn and start regenerating that health he's lost and put him further and further out of reach of protagonist. Innovate is picked up. So Azure can lead the charge here, draw that card, and maybe innovate. Double, double innovate. Uh, double in innovate uh, is not going to have much use just yet. But with a nourish in hand, next turn he may find some real threats to put on the board. Innovate, innovate, nourish? I don't know. I, I, I don't feel you need to at this point. You can always do that next turn. I like holding off there. Well, Finley will help speed things up if he gets that steady shot. Life tap's good as well. He can now dig deeper into his deck to find more answers. Proton Golem's not too bad. It does synergize with the Tunnel Trog. But no real power plays coming from Protagonist. Uh, I think he has been slowed down too much now by Urken. I think Urken's had the, the opportunity to stabilize. And now he has Savage Combatant. Oh, Yogg-Saren, okay. I was not expecting Yogg-Saren in this deck. Behold, Goes for Fandral, Innovate into the double living roots. Make it all the one ones. Gets the spell power buff from the Azure as well. Yeah, I, I feel Protagonist is just too far gone. There's a lot of power on Urkon's board. In the face again? I, I don't see the point. Ah, oh, that is not a good pickup. Can go for the tap here to try and find something. Doomhammer picked up. Earthshot could clear, well, the Tord from the Druid of the Claw, but there's way too much power on board. Urkon is going to take game number one. So not a bad start there from Urken, uh, taking a, a very dominating lead. So he's he managed to stabilize at a certain point in the game, and the draws from protagonists just were just too lackluster. They just had no impact. And once those decks stabilize against aggro decks, and you don't get those draws you need to push that extra bit of damage, it can be very hard for aggro decks to get back in that game. And uh, the Druid of the Claw had a, a big impact. Uh, the Earthshot could have dealt with it, but unfortunately the Earthshot just wasn't enough. It just wasn't enough damage on board. But next game is up. Icon with that 1-0 lead. Going into the mid-range Hunter, which we saw piloted to success by Lion last game. And Shaman being queued up once again by Protagonist. Um, protagonist. Lightning Bolt, Rock Bite, and Rock Bite are not exactly uh, the best hand you could get as a Shaman here. Uh, things are looking not too great for Urkan either. Eagle Horn Bow would probably be the only keep I'd have in this situation. Uh, against Shaman, it clears up Flame Jugglers, it clears up Tunnel Trogs, so it has a lot of use. And there's only one in decks at the moment for these Hunter lists. So I'm happy. I'd be happy with Mulligan and everything. But the eagle horn. Wow, it's a full keep from Urken. Okay. Not sure how much use Unleash the Hounds will get against maybe the more aggressive variations of Shaman. The totem ones tend to develop the board more. Well, let's see. So, totem golem picked up. Coin deadly shot will deal with this no problem at all. And then you have Eagle Horn Blow next turn, but Urken's just going to go for the steady shot. And there we go, that is the Evil Horn Blow target right there, and that is why you keep that card in this matchup. He still has to find an answer for the Totem Golem, but Infested Wolves will at least give him some pressure on board, some very sticky pressure as well, because those spiders are going to be a nuisance. 
Oh, oh so that makes things a little awkward. So now we're going to probably see quick shot on the totem golem, clear it up with a bow, and then coin out the deadly shot to finish off that 7-7. Seven, seven. It's not very damage efficient, but there's not much choice here from the hunter. And bam, 7-7 seven, seven de dealt with. Feral spirits. Kind of looks like the play here. And then Stampede and Kodo will get a great response to that. Dealing with one of the wolves and being able to clear a second one. And Stampede and Kodo has made a huge impact on this game ever since the old gods came out. We got, you know, Hunter running it. I've seen even druids run it in kind of ramp, uh, ramp druids and control druids. We obviously, Paladin makes great use of it with Humility and Aldor Peacekeeper. The Lightning Bolt and Argent Horse Rider is going to deal with the Kodo, and this wolf here. is going to live to fight another turn. But now it's time to drop Scar himself, the big daddy of Hunter. Oh, Infested Wolf Toad, so going for more board presence to just clear out the smaller minions. I like this better, actually. Lava Shark will unlock one crystal. Can go for the dig with the Ancestral Knowledge first before using that Lava Shark. Could go even for another Ancestral Knowledge now. And draws a lot of damage with those Flame Bursts. Oh, wow. I would have attacked with the Horse Rider first. That was very dangerous. Fight, uh, protagonist was very lucky he wasn't punished by the Toad there. So Lava Burst, Lava Burst, Rock Biter is enough to close out this game without a taunt coming from Irkun's side. Because he doesn't quite see this, but we all know Shaman does have enough damage to close out this game. And tie the series 1-1. One, one. No overload left. As that Lava Shock effectively dealt with that problem. And there we go, so a very quick turnaround coming from Protagonist with all that burst damage, digging so deep into his deck with those double ancestral knowledge. Shaman takes the win, and now we have a tie 1-1 one, one. Now our first semi-final of the Ghost Cup. So we've had a lot of new viewers today, we've had uh, loads of people tune in, I'm very thankful for that, and obviously if we've had a lot more than we usually get, so... Maybe you're new to the stream. I'd just like to uh, quickly tell you that we are running Ghost Through Cups Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and I will be here casting them. So be sure to tune in on uh, those days as well. Even get involved yourself. Go to ghostygamers.net slash Hearthstone and uh, pick up those seven HCT points up for grabs. You know, you can get three from winning. You get two from getting into second place, so for losing the grand finals. And then you get one at each if you get third and fourth. So a lot of HCT points being distributed through our Ghost of Cubs every week. And now we're into game number three, Urkon and Protagonist. One of these guys is going to be going to the Grand Finals. And one of them is going to walk away with one HCT point. And we see a Priest coming out from Protagonist. And the Hunter is returning for Urkon. I've been playing Priest a fair bit recently because I am 40, 40 games away from Golden Priest and I really just want to finish Priest off and uh, then I can move on to Warrior and Sham my last two. And, but I'm just finding it so frustrating to play Priest at the moment. I just can't seem to find a build that I like. And uh, Priest has always had a consistency issue within the control variations, uh, which is why I've always favoured Dragon Priest when uh, climbing with the class or just trying to get wins with it. Well, there we go. There's a Blackwing Corruptor, so Protagonist has been uh, reading my mind. And he's going to be locking in that Dragon Priest. And I've played I've I've played Dragon Priest to Legend twice. Because uh, it's, it's, it's quite an easy deck to pilot. It's very mid-range. You mm. kind of just play... You play guys down, and uh, they have good health stats. You trade, you heal. It's, it's got quite a, a simple baseline strategy. Uh, but it can be very effective because your dragon minions can really outpower the board. And Blackwing Corruptor is like the mini fire elemental of the tribe. And it's always a great card. But we see MC Tech, uh, Harrison Jones and Bran. So 
squeezing in a lot of tech cards in this priest list. So going out for coin brand now. Try and get a response from Urken. See if he's afraid of anything in particular that can be comboed with that. But Animal Companion finds Leok the perfect answer. Puffer would have been good as well, could have dealt with it. Uh, Misha would have left it alone, so it was, you know, quite a few chances of finding the response there. MC Tech comes down just as a body, try and fight for the board, but Hindmaster onto Leok makes that into a very powerful minion. 4 6 with Horn. The board is very much under Urken's control right now. He does find the Twilight Guardian, but with no other dragons to battery that card and have its effect. It's going to be uh, staying this hand for now. And then next turn, he has the Blackwing Corruptor to deal with Leok. But that was a very slow turn for the Priest. Maybe perhaps even too slow. But Excavated Evil here actually lines up perfectly. So fortunately for Protagonist, he, he did hold back. And this Excavated Evil is just going to ruin this board, only leaving the Carrion Grub alive. But the Big Daddy's going to come down, Savannah Hymen, another one in hand as well. And the good old classic mid-range king with a ring in terror on the board as he does. Uh, Shadow of Death could answer this, but it's uh, a little too clunky. The Tomb is the best response. Uh, just put in the deck, don't deal with the death rattle, but uh, High Maiden number 2 just comes down. And once again, the same problem shows up. But now you can Shadow Word Death into Twilight Guardian, so now there's some protection in place for Protagonist. But Urken has a lot of resources in his hand, the Eagle Horn Bow, in combination with the Quick Shot. It's going to be enough to deal with this Guardian and keep pushing forward on board. He was considering the Infested Wolf there, but he'd have to, have to invest two minions into this Guardian. And it's just not very efficient. So just going to push with the board here. Holy Nova is going to be one of the things that Protagonist is going to want to see come off the top here. Uh, well, Wound is a taunt. It is a bit of protection. He can even play the Blackwing Corruptor as well. Or the Cabal and steal one of the hyenas. Let me change Actually, he should have still stole the grub there. Uh, if he'd stolen me? the carrion grub, he could heal it if it sticks around. But kill command with the hero power. There's even a Hindmaster as well. That can do it. But, oh, and the Eagle Humble, of course. So that is going to be a very quick response there from Urken and he is going to take a 2-1 lead almost securing his spot in the grand finals so very back and forth series so far from these players very fast games as well uh, last Friday uh, when we had go the last Gosu Cup it was such a control heavy meta game there was just loads of control paladin uh, there was control warrior uh, we had a bit of priest too uh, lots of Reno Jackson Warlocks, so we had lots of very slow drawn out games which were going to fatigue and uh, this meta game this week is completely different, it's just like really aggressive, very mid range based. So uh, quite refreshing, I like to see things switch up as time goes on. But there we go, next game, Urkan is on match point, this could secure his ticket to the grand finals, guaranteeing him two HCT points. If he lost and three if he wins and protagonist if he goes out now with this priest he will walk away with one point so tempo warrior from urkan and we've seen how powerful this deck has been in this cup but also widespread within the competitive hearthstone community and this deck has done so well it got uh, two first time wins uh, at the start of series on the, the first two games of the stream and Dragon Priest, let's see if it can handle Tempo Warrior. Museum Creator as well, being squeezed into this deck. I find Dragon Warrior, uh, Dragon Priest sorry, to be quite difficult to build sometimes because there's a lot of tech choices you want to fit in, but you need enough dragons to be able to battery 
the uh, Blackwing Corruptors and the, the Guardians, for example. Ooh, Shift in Shade. Not bad, not bad. Shift in Shade uh, can be a very crazy card. Uh, it can swing very heavily if you pick up a very valuable tool from your opponent's deck. So there is the monkey, the fierce monkey, who's going to be answered by the Shadow Word Pain. And gets to push out a powered shield as well. Uh, I like putting it on the Northshire Cleric just to protect the Fiery War Axe. And the one two has kind of done his job. He found the shift in shade. So now we'll probably just see an Acolyte of Pain come down. So this will demand a Guardian if he draws the dragon. He doesn't. It's a little unfortunate there for protagonists not finding that dragon battery. Because then you could have played the Guardian and then you could have kind of locked out that Acolyte from getting value draws. But now the Acolyte, in combination with the Crocon, can deal with this Northshire Cleric without having it having much impact when drawing cards. I wield the power. Blackwing Corruptor deals with the Crocon Elite very easily. And now, wow, so Protagonist is just pushing damage here. He is not concerned about the additional card draw that Acolyte of Pain will bring. He is going on the offensive. And this might be him knowing that he can steal it next turn with the Cabal Shadow Priest. So that may be his plan, his long-term plan. But Ravaging Ghoul will disrupt that plan, uh, dealing the one damage to the Acolyte, getting that additional draw. The second draw will come from clearing this Museum Creator, execute, make him down. Fiery War Axe is picked up, so now Fiery War Axe can deal with the Black and Corruptor, but the Shift in Shade still remains do as it pleases. So there is the Dragon, so... Guardian can come down to protect his shade, and with the power word shield, he can clear out this Ravaging Ghoul and still have one health left. Still very vulnerable to a second Ravaging Ghoul, but uh, handled the board very nicely there. Um, Armorsmith coming down first, second Ravaging Ghoul, like I said. He's already seen one, so he's probably assumed there won't be a second. But the second Ravaging Ghoul actually creates a lot of impact for Irk and he gets to clear the entire board and uh, rebuild momentum. So now Cabal can steal the Armorsmith, which is not bad at all. Let me change your mind. Excavate Evil uh, would have cleared the board, but there wouldn't have been anything else played. There's a battle range as well from the shift in shade, so a little bit of card draw. But that slam is going to allow the Ravaging Ghoul to either clear or just leave him in the Rafi Weaponsmith. Oh, I like this. Go for the blood as well. Clear it out. That Cabal Shadow Priest. So now no battle range to be activated. He's got two armor. Another dragon is picked up, so that does shoot it out. Oh, just go for the excavated evil. Could have got out the guardian there. Did it go for the well? I'm surprised at this because the well now acts as it could act as a good battery for the rest of the dragons that need it in your deck. Because now the issue is if he doesn't draw another dragon, the guardian just becomes a little lackluster. Oh, there we go. Second whelp. the attack for the one card battle rage gets the worm rest and he heals it back up <laughs> i like it get that enrage off very well played from protagonist here clever use of that lesser heal and the other executor lays out that guardian and the second blood who brave comes down and these are fantastic targets for Cabal's Shadow Priest, but we've only already seen one used, and I'd be very surprised if this dragon list could squeeze in any more Cabal Shadow Priests, especially having Bran, uh, MC Tech, Midnight Drake, 
for example. Are you wow. me? I've never seen this car played. It's the uh, the reverse Twilight Drake. A 3-4 three, for four, four mana. Not much value from that. I admire the creativity coming from Protagonist, but uh, unfortunately it isn't going to pay off. Um, made to fit. And no fear of light bomb anymore from priests. The board is overwhelmed. Erkan still playing safe. He is on only about 13 health now with that armor gain. And just going to clear this board every time. Excavated Evil picked up off the top. But this will only empower the Frothing Berserker. And it will give armor to Erkan. So, yeah, not the best thing he can do really unless he entombs the frog in this turn uh heals up and prays and then mm. excavate evil next turn oh i don't know i don't like this I will trust you. the power of this frog and berserker is gonna be overwhelming with varian picked up off the top as well erkin can close out this game very easily now. I think the Entomb was better in that situation simply because you can't allow a 12 1 from him, Berserker. And now he throws away his uh, Dragon Battery as well. So if he picked up Chillmore next turn, uh, he won't be able to have its Death Rattle activation. Alright, Varian time. Daddy's home. Your skills are growing. What has Daddy brought? Another Frog and Berserker? And Excavate Evil and a Blood. So, not much. Could have been a lot more fresh than from Barry in there. But how do you handle this board now as the Priest? And the Brand picked up off the top. Can Entomb the one Frog in. But that is not going to be enough. And Erkan is going to be able to take this series and go through to the Grand Finals. You have much to learn, Anduin. Your dad says so. So there we go. Erkan is our first grand finalist in the Gosu Cup. The first ever Monday edition. And we'll be seeing him a little bit later.